I think we're in. And we're gonna get started soon. At some point. Potentially. We hope. Hopefully all your quality is running beautifully. Yeah, so. Currently waiting to start. Let's get into the game. Use the in-game one because I can mute that from in-game. Oh, look at that! You can see my cursor. Hey, there I am. I'm not on that screen. Background music. Oh, there we go. BG, BGM, volume one. There we go. So you listen to that in game. And it's going to sound good in the background. We will turn it off. Oh wow, it actually continued, it didn't restart the song. I bid restart it there. Yeah, so I can launch that from... Uh, let's get all the Alex Cups up. Just join this one. Oh yeah. Let's find something to mute and unmute that. I can't use play buttons, let's use plus and minus. There is a bit of warm up going on here. 
Okay, so I can mute it. I can play it. Brilliant. Let's, uh... Bracket is number three. Number one. And that's number two. Start recording. There we go. Right, we are in game for the first one. We have BW, the man, the myth, the legend behind these tournaments that are playing for us today, versus SDI. sure if follow killer is actually going to be on but we'll see so bw are already off to a 2-0 lead coming up to the first minute this is on fuse and that bw thinks is overplayed but at the same time is very good at this map has 250 armors and a mega health it is semi-unique in that way and we have some rules about spawns. 40% of the time it will be the furthest spawn away from the player who did the frag. Which means 60% of the time it's entirely random, which is why you just saw uh, STDI spawn right next to BW. I'm going to say Stiddy, I think. I'm not sure how you're supposed to pronounce that. So BW not taking that because he doesn't have the uh, extra health needed, or that is overhealed even. And very close to going down there, only 14 health left, but have a 4-0 lead at the two minute mark and a commanding control over the map, which is definitely looking good for BW right now. This is a best of three. There are a lot of games going on right now. And we should be seeing there's a very impressive setup behind all of this, so we should be seeing some very nice things coming out from all of this. We missed that jump going up, but able to take out STDI. Well, STDI takes themselves out with that. BW timing the items, well known now for uh, timing every single item. To perfection and on this map definitely helps with the two minor items being effectively one major item being able to time three things instead of just the one is definitely very powerful so bw in a good position to be just staying up top got the health got the ammo got the uh, position but takes a bit of damage by a spam rocket doesn't have the grenade launcher which could hamper him in a close range fight such as this one can be quite difficult to hit shots properly with the rocket launcher at close range it doesn't have the best of splash damage so let's see now preferring to go 
rather than the rocket launcher, go for the shotgun in that fight. Surprise shot there. Here's the item be taken. You can hear basically everything in this game from anywhere around the map. And STDI takes out BW. We are not going to be having super spectate options. Okay, L is my command auto spec. I'm not quite sure why that's not popping off. I have to figure that out in between maps, in between matches, a little bit later on. Oof. Super Spectate does appear to be off. Maybe I can turn it on for myself. BW, a purple player. Nice shot down there. It's still not completely out of it for STDI. Had a bit of a bad start, but could definitely pull this back up and bring it back for themselves. Just circling the map now, trying to find a bit more health, a bit more armor, a bit more weapons, which gets taken out by BW with a surprise attack. I assume BW wasn't going in there expecting a fight, but you've always got your weapon out, you're always ready to take a fight. Now STDI thinks he's got this fight, he's going to get it. BW takes the kill and they trade out there, but STDI has managed to pick up this mortar, um, well picked up the 50 armor and the mortar at the same time. BW does damage to himself trying to get that mega. STDI picks it up. That's a good place to start from if you want to launch a comeback as it looks like STDI is going to want to do right now. Goes him but kills himself. Now just trying to get a bit more damage dealt. The rocket's just not quite landing there for him. BW playing extremely well. Dancing around the back. We are going to switch back over to BW. STDI running away. Trying to conserve his life. Going to need to. Just doesn't get that item and BW manages to make the kill. STDI just about surviving but BW doesn't have much health left either. It won't matter too much about that extra armour but the health is going to do it. STDI gets the health but gets taken down by two beautiful rockets by BW. And again, BW just get, managing to get the frags up, even if it means he goes down into the lava. The frags are going up for him. A massive amount of damage there from STDI, but cannot finish it off, even though BW was on 20 health there. He just couldn't grab the finisher. Picking up shards on this map, extremely important. There's not so many as there are on some other maps, but with the lack of health on this map, they become a major percentage of the overall health you can actually pick up and get. 11 to 2 your scoreline at 7.5 minutes into the game. We'll see if STDI can bring this back at all. It looks like the game very much going towards BW, but there's still certainly some time to have this change over. STDI there. Just making a bit of a mistake. Can't quite get across. A direct rocket up there for BW right in the face of STDI. Pushes him back so that he can't make the attack. Six seconds. I'm not sure which arm is coming up next, but one of them is in six seconds. So one of the armors now up. The other one coming up in only a few seconds. So the one down behind this mega, down in the lava room, is up. Both armors are now up. So each player could grab one apiece. 
BW grabs the first one. And he's likely off to grab the second one right now. Gonna grab it. Doesn't take any damage. Just in the wrong position. You Shooting through floors there. From STDI. A little bit of damage. Should be able to get this kill. And does. Brings it back. 14 to 4. But only a little over a minute left on the scoreboard. It could be too little too late. He's definitely mounting an offensive. Hitting a lot of shots. But just can't finish this. This is the... This has been what it is. It does a ton of damage, STDI, but just isn't able to get the kill. The armor has just come up. BW's got an armor. STDI doesn't, so it's going to come down to positioning and aim and BW. Here's the blaster go off. STDI flies up in the air. A free shot at the top for BW. In the right position for it. BW makes a move down towards SDDI, goes under, gonna pick up the Mega, last Mega of the game. And there's five seconds left, this map is going to be W. Who takes it with a GG. So we next have Stormkeep. Because we have got a bot that does automatic pickings, which is really nice. I believe courtesy of Maros Offos, who's a legend for doing that. Going into the next game. Let's put the music back on. Just gonna have some optic music barreling around. During the times that we are waiting. So your chat. So I should be able to switch between the screens without sending messages to chat anymore. Oh no, we're not waiting to start. Um, turn off, waiting to start.
All right. So making everything smooth, smooth and happy. All right, let's get back into the Synodic and get ready to go. So here we are, going to start off on, start off on SCDI. BW winning the first map. Make the noise stop. There we go. Gonna get better at this. Gonna get better at this. STDI being taken out by BW in the first fight of the game. BW taking relatively little damage from that actually. And managing to capitalise. Gets the suicide out from STDI. BW a heavily stacked player right now. Although STDI actually did just pick up that armour I think. But BW still starting this fight with a heavy stack. STDI though doing a lot of damage to BW. Managing to get quite a bit done. A big amount of damage going off there. BW being taken out. STDI grabs the health. And BW goes into the lava. STDI picking up the armour. <laughs> And BW goes down. So oh, two to two on this. Two minutes in. That's much better scoreline than we were at this point on the last map where over half of the frags were actually scored already by this point. BW on very low health must be only on one health or so. On nine health there. And now we have three to two the scoreline. Two and a half minutes into the game. real and BW picks up the mega health STDI are very low but doing a lot of damage to BW BW now very low as we go into the next minute of this game the Hagar an extremely powerful weapon if utilized correctly unfortunately missing those four shots will not help you at all but as a panicky spam you can just Bam the rest of it away. Mega health is now up. BW gets sent straight into the sky. Luckily hits the roof and doesn't go flying out the top of there into space. And now manages to start capitalising and getting some frags on his board. 7-3 to three now. Very fast fragging games. Very typical of Xenotic with these sort of players. Not afraid to take and push the fight. And BW snipes that rocket out of the air and gets STDI. That was a very impressive shot right there. Extremely impressive. Now, can he capitalise on that and take it into a kill? Look at the stack that BW has right now. He's going into this with 200, 200, knows he can push extremely hard and he's taking a lot of back spam damage already gone down 100 health and 150 armor in that fight two seconds until this health comes up just picking up some shards just to make sure that opponent can't get them now grab both those major items the only items on this map 
It was a stark contrast to the last map where we had no mega armor, no 100 armor, and only a uh, 250 armors. We don't, we don't have any 50 armors, although there are 225 armors. One up in that little gully above them where BW was just shot, and one over the other side of the map, next to this little set of stairs. BW comes in here a bit late, doesn't manage to pick up the item. And STDI manages to grab it, 8 to 5, with STDI having a bit of map control. BW hasn't lost map control completely, though, does go down there, he's with 25. But he hasn't lost map control completely, he knows where all the items are, and when they're coming up. But STDI does too, which is when you get some extremely good fights, especially from a player like BW who is not right now in control. He knows when these items are, he knows that's just been taken, he knows the second one's just been taken because he just watched it get taken. He hasn't got anything he can really fight with, he must be on only a few health, and there he goes down. Really on only a few health, but so now is STDI. Gonna have to play this a little bit carefully with the health position here's bw bw here's them and bw manages to capitalize and get the kill now back in control of the map and in control of the items grabs both of the items with them both being so close together these guys are pretty much guaranteed to get one of each because they are just far enough apart that if you just go and stand on that item whoever grabs the health is gonna push through kill you and take the item um, that's going to put them in an extremely good position. So BW already back around for this mega health. Sometimes they feel like only a few seconds. Sometimes they feel like minutes on end. But armor being taken. BW just trying to push this lead. Trying to get the lead on the board. Push it out a little bit more. STDI doing a very good job at defending it. Trying to get away. Trying not to let BW take control of this map quite so tightly but it is going to be a very difficult endeavor i'm gonna try not to go so hard i started very hard last week i'm really paid for it in the end but we're gonna see how it goes this week another frag there for bw and the bomb out of there takes a big amount of damage from a few rockets, but has the stack to take it. And when you've got the stack like that, you can definitely push harder. 15 frags, and I can tell I've been watching too much Counter-Strike, because I thought that was the last frag. But no. 15 to 7, this map just goes for 10 minutes. That's how we play. I think. No mercy score. No, no mercy score. Just 10 minutes. Duel is brutal. There is no mercy. Sixteen to seven, your current scoreline in this game. In the first round of groups. For one of the groups. I'm not quite sure. There's four groups and challenge has decided to put a lot of space so I can't fit it all on the screen. So now BW pushes very quickly around. He's definitely got a scoreline that he can control. So you see him slowing down. He's not taking every fight. He's only taking the fights. When you see here, he took that fight because the fight came to him. So he's got to push this fight because otherwise he's going to lose the armor if he runs away. He doesn't want to run away because he knows he's got the stack. He knows he's got the weapons. He might as well take the fight. But there, he could have ran in, decided not to, took the fight elsewhere. Doesn't have to take this. Doesn't have to push it. And you can see he's not going to push, push this fight. Just kind of waiting until his opponent comes to him with very low health. Then pushing off for the item, making sure he controls the map. That's how you play when you're in control. And that's why the lead is quite so high. Because he's not pushed it. You lose a lot of health to a backspamming player. It's very easy to lose health to a backspamming player when you just push them relentlessly. As we saw earlier as BW tried to make the gap happen. So he's able to play a very sensible game for the rest of this. And put a big lead in. Not dropping too many frags really. 
mutually fragged. He's not going to push too hard after this. And he's not really too fussed about losing the frag just there. It's very much just a quicker little bit of a game. And there we go. GG on that one. Good amount of songs, really. Right then, let's see what's in the servers. Let's see who is playing. No one in that server. I need at least two people in a server, because otherwise there is no game going on. Gats versus Rainbow Shadow. There we go. So we have a game about to start as they are picking currently. Let's turn that down a bit. Just a bit too loud for me. I know I could turn the game down, but actually my game volume is like 0.7 or something. 0.5 so yeah the bg the music volume being a bit Yeah, super spectate. Wow, this is a tough competition. It is single elimination all the way. The groups don't appear to do anything. Here we go though, Rainbow Shadow versus Gats. Starting off over on Rainbow Shadow. On, I'm not quite sure who picked this map, but we're starting off on Silent Siege. Gats takes a bit of damage there, but does manage to grab the Mega Armor, or Mega Health rather. Rainbow Shadow got the armor. So Gats in a good position to uh, take a bit of damage there. Not in a position to take straight up one shot on the Vortex, but yeah. I'm sure he can deal with it. Puts himself into a good position to be. And then Rainbow Shadow just moving out. This map a very push in, push out style of play. Not a map I'm best versed in, really, so uh, we'll see how the commentary comes along over the time. Fairly good at playing it, for some reason. I've never commentated it, I don't believe. So these games are more going to be warm-up games. We're going to be chilling, we're going to be chatting, and then we'll be getting into the serious casting as we get towards the end. I've just realised I don't at all have Twitch chat up, so... Yes, PTB, we have the game soundtrack because we are professional and because I just forgot to turn it off. Because I don't really want to be casting with it on, so I'm going to have to remember to do that more. So while we're casting, we're just going to be listening to the game, but while we are in the warm-ups and in everything else, we'll be having the game soundtrack on. Because it's a wonderful soundtrack and nobody ever really listens to it. And that's definitely what we want. 
So Rainbow Shadow here. Gets taken out. Gat's now four to nothing up. Sorry about the lack of casting for the last little bit. Gat's posting a couple of good shots onto Rainbow Shadow. Now moving around the map trying to get some position. Four nil is a decent position to be in. Now makes it five. An unfortunate spawn is going to make it six. And then Gat's going to drop down on the items. Fifteen seconds between the items. It is a pretty good position. There's no way to really steal, but Gat's doesn't have a guaranteed, but on but a guarantee on both items. That mega armor is now up. Cat's going to stall. Can hear where Rainbow Shadow is. So if Rainbow Shadow wants the timing, they now have it based on the sound that Gat's just made. Teleporter and frag go to Gat as he drops down, grabs the mega health. Unfortunately, Rainbow Shadow running just the other way potentially doesn't have time on that. Otherwise, he'd have definitely gone for it, I would have thought. But Rainbow Shadow getting taken out again. And Gats with an 8 to nothing lead from the start of this. Looking like taking a stranglehold. We're over onto Rainbow Shadow again now, though. Who is playing fairly well. Definitely not... Uh, not slowing down at all. But just unable to get the kills when Gats gets low, but now manages to get one on the board. Well, two second on the board, but first one without also going down himself. Capitalizes, gets the second one. Gonna need to pick up some items now. Five seconds until this mega health. Gats goes down again. That's four to nine. The item gets taken. 100 armor. And now over to the Mega Health. Gats is nowhere to be seen. Rainbow Shadow is free to take it. And a little bit of fall damage, which is rare to hear in Xenotic, actually. I was extremely confused when I first heard that sound. I was like, what the hell was that? Oh, that's fall damage. Oh. <laughs> I've been playing the game for six months and haven't fall damaged. Unfortunate spawns for both players. Allowing one frag up, so nobody can really complain there. Both players have had their unfortunate spawns. Again, this is a semi-random system. 40% of the time it will spawn the furthest. And 60% of the time it will spawn completely randomly. So, Gats. Trying to scoop up some armor and some health. The mega health is now up. And Gats grabs it. He's got a little bit of armor from the shards around this map. And he's going to be able to do a good amount of damage. One boosts up, one drops down. Shooting through floors in this game. Definitely worth the shot. Beautiful flick rail from Rainbow Shadow. Played that to absolute perfection. Didn't even need to flick too much in the end, actually. To be honest, it wasn't really a flick rail. Beautiful, well-played, well-timed rail to pop up, put Gats in the crosshair, and fire. And Gats going to be pushing another fight. 30 to health for Rainbow Shadow. Going to go down, and Gats is going to scoop up another Mega. And now as Rainbow Shadow scoops around for the small items, Gats is also going to be scooping around for the small items. Because if Gats can take up as many small items as possible, there's a lot on this map, then Rainbow Shadow won't be able to get them. But if Rainbow Shadow can grab one of the bigger items, then it's going to get them into an extremely good position anyway. One second left on that health. Gats pops down some Electro, but isn't able to land any of it. And now makes a move towards adding to the scoreboard, because four frags is not a lot. As we've already shown in this game, especially if you take that much damage and Rainbow Shadow manages to pick the kill. And now Gats pushes and 
just goes down with four health remaining. Rainbow Shadow stays alive, but Gats grabs the health. Rainbow Shadow knows it's now not up. Takes another look, though. Here's Gats there on the bounce pad. Sound very important in a game like Xenotic. You can hear from so far, you can hear so much. And sound will tell you everything. Rainbow Shadow, they're very low, and Gats takes them out and grabs the next mega health. 11 to 8, but we have two and a little bit minutes left on the scoreline. Rainbow Shadow, very capable of bringing this back and taking it on this map. But Gats going to keep capitalising on the position that they've got. Triple kill. As Rainbow Shadow goes down again, Gats is just trying to push the issue and try to keep Rainbow Shadow. Rainbow Shadow pushes in hard, manages to grab the item, which stops Gats from getting it. But I think Rainbow Shadow is going to go down and manages to kill himself on that one. Unfortunately, but does manage to keep Gats from getting that item, which is keeping Gats pretty low. He's on nine health right now. Rainbow Shadow should be able to get in, grab the armor, but takes a big amount of damage. Isn't low enough. Gats is running away. Rainbow Shadow has barely any health, but Gats had to run away there because after hitting one grenade, one direct grenade, if your opponent doesn't go down, you do not know how much health they've got. Rainbow Shadow picks up the frag, five frags in it. With one minute left on the clock, it is still kind of anyone's game, but Gats is playing it definitely. Now he's heard that, you can see he pulls back, pulls back, running away, plus back, plus back, plus back. Just trying to get out of here. Just gets that spawn, very unfortunate spawn there again. But we are going to see some more of these with the extra randomness of the spawns, or at least they can't be entirely predicted. Gats now going to go down here, I should think. 11 health though, 2 frags and 20 seconds. It's doable, but it's going to take some luck and some good doing from Rainbow Shadow. Could they tie it up? Gats has got to run away. He's only got 5 seconds to survive. 1 frag, 2 seconds. It's not going to happen. GG, that was incredibly close at the end there close all game we thought gats was getting away from it at one point but then rainbow shadow would just bring it back and yeah wow it was incredibly close down there at the end so we'll hop back into it and now we're headed over to graphite so this map, very good map. Got a few nice little trick jumps you can do. Not got any uh, any graphics. Just some uh, wall textures and colours. But who needs any more? Most people turn them off anyway. So we're not quite into the game yet, just sitting around in the warm-up stage, seeing what's going to happen. Rainbow Shadow's ready. Gat's not quite. Gat's actually showing up green in the... Uh, in the pictures there. To it. Rainbow Shadow V Gats, map number two, 
Gats currently with a 1-0 lead in the maps. And Rainbow Shadow gonna get the first kill on Graphite. But get very quickly traded there. And Gats gonna be trying to claim some more frags. Rainbow Shadow very quickly picking up. Start of this map definitely gonna be chaotic, but just the same as it was last time. But last time Gats was able to get a little bit ahead. This time doesn't look like that's gonna be the case. Takes quite a bit of damage off of that stray rocket and a beautiful curver from Rainbow Shadow just doesn't hit with that other rocket coming through the side there Gats has the 50 armor Rainbow Shadow has barely any health left and he's moving out of the way sees Gats, Gats sees the items up and takes a perfect shot Gats with the shot but going to take a lot of damage from Rainbow Shadow only has 7 health left going to be running for that mega, grabs it now Gats with a very good amount of health. Rainbow Shadow quite low. And Gats going to be trying to capitalise. Take some points. Take some score. Score even at the minute and a half mark. And then Gats pulls ahead. He's going to be hoping not to get fragged right there. But unfortunately Rainbow Shadow just manages to grab a rocket launcher and get a good position in just in time. Gats spending a lot of time trying to get the armour. Even though Rainbow Shadow had already grabbed it, but Gat's going to pick up that Mega Health. And now pushing around. Big damage coming out from Rainbow Shadow. And there is another kill. Rainbow Shadow now in the lead. 5-4, to 6-4 to four with a beautiful blaster shot to finish off Gat's. That just doesn't quite connect with the first blaster shot to knock Rainbow Shadow away from that armour. And then goes down to the grenade spam. Absolutely big brain play to keep pushing that right there. Rainbow Shadow really forging ahead on the scoreline and really managing to get some armour and stack built up so that this scoreline doesn't go away. But not quite able to push just in here. Gat's going to manage to use that mortar, manage to do some chipping damage and manage to take a kill. Now going to just grab two air shots in a row, going to grab the armour off the table. But Rainbow Shadow, both players extremely low. Gats just manages to pick up a little bit of health. Both players running out of ammo. Rainbow Shadow must only have nine health left. There it is. Gats manages to pick up another frag. Manages to pick up the item. That mega health. Rainbow Shadow extremely low, both players extremely close in this game. Rainbow Shadow leaves, Gats can't quite connect that rocket or any grenades. And now Rainbow Shadow able to pick up that 50. As you heard, Gats will have heard that, knows what sort of health Rainbow Shadow is on. And manages to do just that little bit of damage to take out Rainbow Shadow. Two seconds left until this mega's up, Rainbow Shadow is not going to contend it. But it's going to come in and unfortunately pushes just a little bit too hard. And goes down. Gats now in the lead of this game for the first time since we started. And gets taken out. So Rainbow Shadow falling behind a little bit now. Needs to just calm down, slow down, pull back, not take so many risks just getting in the wrong place at the wrong time it's hard to break that cycle sometimes when your opponent has control you have to push in you have to make a difference but if you push in quite so hard like this it can all go wrong and you can just lose the fight and rainbow shadow just doesn't seem to be able to connect enough shots to take gats down to low health and then just as they're trying to get away goes down and then again Gats just hiding in the corners but gets taken out that time so Gats now on the back foot the respawning in both of these games these are definitely not the maps these it, these aren't usually noted as respawny uh, respawny motion carrying maps but 
these two players definitely play with play styles that complement each other, allowing for that sort of momentum -y play. It's the sort of play style I like to watch, though. It's the play style that gives us frags and high scoring games rather than sitting away in cubby holes. It's a great play style to have in Fnatic, a game that gives you all the tools to go fast and play hard. Rainbow Shadow going to be pushing in, grabs the item, has the health now to take on Gats. Going to get the kill just about Gats now. Goes down five seconds up. Gats comes around the corner and Rainbow Shadow takes themselves down five and a half minutes into this game. Gats has the mega health. 12 seconds until the mega armor is up. Gats is up there a little bit early, takes a lot of damage to pay the price and goes down and now... The item should be up. Rainbow Shadow going to pull away from it. Gat's going to push in. Rainbow Shadow could have done with a little bit left over time while in their beautiful rail though. There is a 50 health in that armour room. And just gets the kill as Gat's lands. Probably only a few units away from the side of that pickup. And the extra health to win that fight. Rainbow Shadow pushing ahead. This map is absolutely incredibly close. Just as the last one was, these two are incredibly close players, which is great to see. It's always good that people are having incredibly close fights. Gats now trying to regain control. We've got the item control, or at least it seems like this map is very small, despite what it seems with the big open corridors, but actually you can hear all of the items being picked up. So Rainbow Shadow could know the time on both of these items, despite having not seen them be taken. But you can see Rainbow Shadow just trying not to advance, trying not to take too much damage. Playing extremely clever game. Not quite playing so defensively as to just completely lose instantly based on... Uh, based on not being able to pick up any items. And Rainbow Shadow picks up another kill onto Gats. Gats, unfortunately, with all of the health in the world, Rainbow Shadow was just able to avoid being hit for so long. But Rainbow Shadow can't quite connect that last little bit of health onto Gats and a beautiful flying frag through the air with the Vortex. Gives a five frag advantage to Rainbow Shadow with only two minutes left to go. It's not much as this game's gone, but it's definitely something, especially towards the end of the game, where you can really start to pull back but Rainbow Shadow doesn't want to leave this alone. You can see this is definitely part of Rainbow Shadow's playstyle. Not wanting to pull back. Not wanting to lose any more frags if they can take control. And with this health, going to leave. Now going to see it, but not wanting to go up there. Very low health and Gats is going to get the kill. But did Rainbow Shadow pick up the item? Rainbow Shadow did pick up the item before going down. Mega health is going to come up and Gats should be able to take this. Rainbow Shadow looking around, unable to connect anything. Gats just trying to scoop up some items. Currently doesn't have any. That's good health, but no weapons to really take the fight. Rainbow Shadow only on a few health and Gats gets themselves blown up. One minute left on the clock. We still have five frags in it. Four now with Gats making that shot. Rainbow Shadow picks up the item, drops through the keyhole and teleports off into the distance. And Rainbow Sh and, uh, Gats going to go down. Rainbow Shadow now trying just to control this lead. With only 30 seconds left, it is almost a surefire thing that we are going to a third map here. But Rainbow Shadow... Still going to have to be careful because five frags, very, very difficult in this time limit now. But from the start, 45 seconds when those frags were taken, 
definitely possible. Gat's just getting one kill, proving that... Not completely out of it. But the time limit says you will not have this one. Another incredibly close game of Xenotic played right there. As we move on to Fuse. That will be the decider for this series. Cable. Alright then. Here we go. The Decider, Rainbow Shadow V Gats. And we'll start off on Gats. Rainbow Shadow just taking that last map. Could be an indicator though, so Storm Siege and Graphite really, very different maps to this actually, the way that they play. Graphite probably closer in terms of the layout and close in terms of using teleporters to your advantage than Storm Siege. But Storm Siege is certainly a map um, with all the major items rather than, well I suppose Graphite as well. Both have the major items. So neither map really particularly quite like this. I'm not sure who has the advantage on this map. And it could go either way. With either of them could have just practiced this specific map a lot more than the other. Map knowledge definitely very important in Xenotic. Beautiful frag by Rainbow Shadow. Unfortunate spawn from Gats gets taken out. Another unfortunate spawn, but potentially will be able to get this kill. Rainbow Shadow with four, well, nine health left. Takes a third frag in this game. Random spawns definitely doing some work. That's going to get a little bit of damage dealt. There's the Mega taken by Gats. One of these armors I think is up. No, neither armor up. Got 15 seconds left until the next armor. Both players just scooping around, picking up little bits of the items, the little bits of dregs on the outside, because in this map there are a fair few little items and with them not having any mega armor to think of the little armor shards are extremely important use flare shot from guts and a finishing blow in the air with a curving rocket absolutely beautiful frag there Rainbow Shadow makes some good shots, but gets taken down. Mega health is up, Gat's gonna grab it. Now Rainbow Shadow tries to contend for this armor, grabs it, but gonna get taken down. It doesn't have the weaponry to really contest that. And in quite an open space, Gat's was there, so he's able to avoid a lot of that electro. Electro is an incredibly powerful weapon in closed spaces, which makes it absolutely deadly in something like Clan Arena. Or on something like Silent Siege with a lot of closed corridors, but on something like this map with a lot of wide spaces, even the corridors are very wide. The narrowest corridor would be the one that Gats is in right now. That's still fairly wide, and you have a full exit out the back where the opponent can't see you as it bends round. 
so it's not entirely the easiest one to get some Electro into. Cat's now pushing this advantage, he's got the four minutes in and eight, three is the scoreline. Not quite sure who got that, I think actually, Rainbow Shadow seems to have got it. But going to take quite a lot of damage from Gats after the fight. Both players, some absolutely fantastic shots coming out. But Rainbow Shadow now with a frag. Back to where we're watching them. We're not going to quite be able to do anything. Going to have to run off for some extra items. And not able to push the fight. But until we get to the five minute mark, it doesn't really matter who is winning. So now we have time for Rainbow Shadow to pull this game back, turn it entirely around. That's going to be taking a lead into the second half and definitely starting to play defensive. You can tell he's not quite got the control he wants. It's hard to gain ultimate control over this map with the two items. It's not the easiest thing to do. But Gats has got very good control over this Mega. That's an important one to have. And he's able to get in out without taking too much damage and with something that's so exposed that can be quite difficult to do do you risk going in early and being a bit more hidden or do you risk going in at the exact time and your opponent is right there and takes you out but being a bit more hidden you've gone in early your opponent can just drop a rocket right on you knock you off grab the item and be gone rainbow shadow extremely low only a few pixels of health Both players going to be coming up to a very close fight here. Rainbow Shadow very low. Gats also low. Doesn't want to push through if your opponent has just stood the other side. With a shot that they can take you out. It's very difficult to know whether your opponent has a lot of health or not. Gats going to be pushing through and manages to make a frag. Rainbow Shadow now got five frags to bring back in three minutes left on this game. And we are looking at some very good games here. For where we are in this tournament, this is extremely high quality. Triple kill. Rainbow Shadow. Ooh, big hit there. Gats again with a five frag score lead. Keeping it definitely to the front. And wanting to put much more pressure onto Rainbow Shadow on this map. Not wanting it to come back like it did on Storm Siege. Storm Siege? Silent Siege. That's the one. I couldn't remember the name of the map. Just going to have a jiggle of my headphones. And then we'll get back into it. Gats is going to be pushing himself to run away here. Hops over to the Mega, grabs that. 
going to do a little bit of damage down onto Rainbow Shadow, misses the rail, and then moves the position. When you miss the rail, you instantly want to move your position. Your opponent will now know the vague position you're in, but you don't want to just stand there, otherwise they could just turn around and shoot a rocket your way. And with Gatsby's help at the time, he wasn't willing to take a straight rocket. Beautiful jump across there from Rainbow Shadow. Gats going to be sacrificing a few items here, specifically that Mega. But Rainbow Shadow going to go down. And now you've got 15 to 7 on the scoreline. This map not quite going so close in the way of the score. But Gats and Rainbow Shadow very evenly matched. Both playing incredible Xenotic. But it does look like Gats is just going to completely give up that mega health it's too risky to lose the frags when you can just pick up the uh, armors instead five seconds left on the clock though mega armors right there but neither's gonna take it and there we go another game goes down and guts is gonna take the whole uh whole tournament overall All right, let's uh, move back over here. Continue with our music. Let's take a look at our bracket then. So Dodger versus BW over there. Interesting loser bracket. Definitely a weird system, this. That game's finished. Gats versus Rainbow Shadow. That was the Group E final. And group F. So that's for seeding. These games now. The first game was to drop someone out. So the people who went out. STDI was the first game we watched. Morisophos went out against Hot Dog. Drainer went out against Seeky. Udos went out against Ramses. Johnny B went out against Rainbow Shadow. Alpha Muzjak went out against Paka, so we've got Paka and Spike, Gats and Rainbow Shadow, Champ and Ramses, Solid and Seeky, Mirio and Hot Dog, and Dodger and BW for the seeding. It is an interesting way to do it though, for sure. Playing around with seeding and everything like that. So, Dodger versus BW, Dodger wins, Mirio versus Hot Dog, Mirio wins, Solid versus Seeky doesn't seem to have finished yet, Champ versus Ramses, Champ won, Gats versus Rainbow Shadow, Rainbow Shadow, uh, no sorry, Gats won, 2 to 1 though, Spike versus Packer, uh, I'm not sure on the result of that. I'm going to take a quick break to refill my water bottle as we wait for the next rounds. 
and just to stretch my leg because this is going to be a long one and I'm going to take as many grit, uh, as many gaps as I can this time.
All right, we are back for the bracket. I've had a bite to eat, refill my bottle, and been to the toilet. No one checked their telegrams. That was me. Hopefully the stream is looking all right. Should be right now. Hopefully it's sounding all right. I need some more music. Anyone? There's more, got to be more songs. There's only 22 songs in. Uh, In songs music player. There's got to be more songs than that, that I can put in. Oh well. We'll see if we can get some more for next time. Just set up everything. Penis to you, Maki. Right. So, Hot Dog Seeky gets rid of this. Just watch the old uh, server list. Nope. Some rainbow. I'm actually going to watch. Okay. Let's watch this because then I can see if anyone joins. And I can watch Cop from the. Uh, from the stream, I can watch the cup, cup chat. It's a very intricate system I've got going on here. Lots of buttons, lots of things, not quite properly set up, but we're getting there. Getting to a very professional standard, actually. We've got music in the background. I've got the ability to mute myself. Semi. It's not the easiest. I've got chat i've got stream i've got keybinds that i can swap to the game without having to press buttons on ibs and just keybinds although i'm typing numbers into whatever chat i'm in but mostly i'm going to be in game rather than in irc when i'm changing stuff like that rams is heading to server b2 Let's join over there. Hot dogs just joined on C2. Hot dog Seeky, what we got? Hot dog versus Seeky, we can watch this one. Oh, we're already into the game. Okay. Oh. I guess we're going to be starting a little bit late with this. I'm not going to be quite getting the first of the run, but Hot Dog versus Seeky going to be a very close game here. All right, already got this one cast, so I will head out to a different match. Uh, Rainbow versus Champ, that's not a match, is it? Yes, it is. No, shouldn't be. That was on. That's the wrong one. That one. No, champs through. Rainbow versus Spike. This is quite difficult to find uh, the right servers here. No, on that one. Just make the music 
the noises stop. Yeah, I'm really not entirely sure. Okay, go A1. Let's join A1 and see what's going on over there. C1. Yeah, I really am just going to be drop and join quite a bit around here until we find games that we can cast. But then it'll, it calms down towards the end, towards what we really need to cast. And we will get this sorted. Somehow. I'll find a way to get this sorted. A lot of bot players coming out of the woodwork again, which is nice to see. Bot is a good clan. Not quite as good as the better clan, but however. <laughs> Are we waiting on these guys to start? Uh, Ramses is playing the loser match. That's what's going on with some of these matches. Packer just picked Hub. Gats picked Silent Siege. Now we're just waiting on what next to drop. So we're definitely playing Hub and Silent Siege and we're just going to see what our next map is going to be. Packer drops Quark, Fuse and Storm keep the last two, and set over here. And uh, we're going to be heading over to the next map. So we will have Hob first, and Storm keep as our last. That's quite nice. Haven't seen Hub yet. I do love this map. Definitely a good map to have up. And we'll see which of these two players pushes in. Packer and Gats. Here we go. Best of three. Five, four, Let's go. Three, two, one, begin. Packer, get in the Mega Spawn. Mega Armor Spawn. Gats grabs the Mega Health. And now both players fight for this early positioning on the map. And the ability to grab the item is the easiest. Both players very low health but going to be pushing 
Be a little bit more. Six seconds left. Obviously, exactly 30 seconds going to be on this first item. Packer going to leave that health. The health goes to Gats both exactly the same time, I think, there. Bummy. So now Gats takes the first kill. On to Packer. Just going to check. I've got all my binds on. Now, Gats has to try and take control of this map. Such a small map, so easy to get damage dealt. And Gats here just floating around this bottom area, trying to pick up a little bit of damage onto Packer, but Packer with a little bit. Oh no, sorry, we're on Packer. Uh, I got confused about who killed who in one section. Packer now. A frag up. Gats telefrags Packer. Absolutely beautiful there. From Packer. Wonderful positioning. Unfortunately, it just goes through right at the exact time to deal the damage. And now Packer with. Definitely item control at the minute. Going to be able to turn that into a frag control. 3-2 to two now the scoreline, and Gats takes himself out, putting it down to 3-1. to one. A nice little blast off from Packer there. Gats going to get a beautiful curving rocket, but Packer spawning exactly where he needs to be, and manages to take Gats out and start off with a very nice amount of health and armour. Now he's just going to try and take some more items. He's got to get some weapons here. Currently sitting very low on the old weapons. No necks, no la grenade launcher. Just a rocket launcher, but he's able to do a hell of a lot of good work with just that rocket launcher. Beautiful play across there with, yeah, with the blaster to get a perfect jump. And now... and Gats going to go at it again in the middle. Packer very much in the lead right now. Not quite sure whether we're... Uh, what Packer was talking about earlier with the position on... Not quite sure why I did that, but he seems to have a very commanding control over this, although Gats might be able to pull it back now. Packer here. Does a lot of damage to Gats just there. And Gats going to be able to get a lot of damage into Packer. Gets the finishing blow. Two health though. Has 100 armor, but 100 armor isn't going to do anything if you've only got two health. Grabs a very nice shot onto Packer, avoids the rocket, and manages to get the kill. A very nice position for Gats to be, and he's pulled it back up six to seven with four minutes into this match. It's certainly going to be a close one, one way or the other. These two players are very close to each other. Packer, very quick to take back the uh, back the control of the map. But Gats is going to get that mega health. Neither player has particularly had too much. Uh, too much of a lead in terms of the health here. But Gats going to have to be very careful coming out of here. Manages to get around those little mines, those little electro mines laid by Packer. Packer manages to finish Gats off though. And takes the lead back, but only by one again. But he does seem to be able to be taking some health and armor this time. Gats has the mega. Packer has the mega armor. 100 armor. And both players playing a lot more cautious now. Not wanting to push in 
quite so much as they were before, both trying to just drop the items where they are. It's a trade of items. Gats goes for that mega armor multiple times, but manages to miss it. Packer picks it up. A beautiful shot. 9 to 8, still the scoreline. Not been a frag in a couple of minutes here. It looks like Packer's going to break that dry spell. Picks it up now, 10 to 8. And Gats hears the sound of that item being grabbed and pulls away from where he was underneath Packer. Doesn't want to take a fight right now. Wants to just deal some damage if he can. Get a good amount of damage. Packer very low though. Going to be wanting to find just that little bit of health. A couple of those 25s will sort him out just nicely. And he's able to get another kill. But Gats is not going to give up that easily. Three frags, not going to phase him too much. He's got the mega health now. Packer a bit early on that jumping across. Potentially has the timing one off. And a mutual frag there. Packer gets Gats with the Vortex and Gats manages to get him with the Electro. And then Gats respawning manages to take the Mega, I think. But Packer got that. Ooh, Packer got the armor, 100 armor. Gats with this Mega on top of Packer running on his head. Both players going down to very low health and Gats manages to pick up the kill in that fight. Three seconds left until this armor comes up. Packer's in the right position, but Gats is going to be able to kill him. Gets a good look at the armor and able to spot that it's up. He now knows when both items are up. Has one of them, has a good position to be able to take this mega health. Packer's going to fall down. Here's the item go, so Packer now knows when it comes up. Now Gats has to capitalise. It even scores. Gats takes the lead for the first time, I think. But Packer quick to take the score back to even. Two seconds left. Now we've got ten seconds left until the Mega Armor. Well, Mega Health, sorry. Mega Armor just been taken. Mega Health about to come up. Gats has gone high. Packer's going to try and take the kill, but Gats looks like he's going to try and take the armor. He's gone over towards the armor. Oh no, he's stayed up top. So Packer has both major items under control right now. A little bit of a score lead, but that hasn't exactly helped him. He's had a massive score lead taken away from him by Gats. And Gats didn't even lose control of the items at that time. Packer now. In a good position. Lots of damage taken though. No major items coming up for a short while. Gats must know that Packer's low, but the fact that he got a good amount of damage in there without a kill will possibly put him off that trail. The perfect timing on the item for Gats there. He's got that right on, misses the rail. Tiny amount, a slither of health left for Packer. As he picks up a couple of health packs, manages to get out of there and grabs that mega health. And now Gats killing himself. Packer got himself before, so it's not too bad. Packer picks up those healths, kills Gats. With 40 seconds left on the clock, we have a two frag scoreline. It is still anyone's game. Packer has to be very careful. There's still just long enough for Gats to be able to take this. This map is so small that neither player can pull back at all. Gats manages to get the kill on Packer. Will he be able to capitalise on Packer's position? You've got 20 seconds left. Gats has a good amount of health. None of the major items are going to realistically be up in time. There's only a second left and Packer is going to go down. Hopefully now Gats in the last second picks up a kill. Packer could lose this map. That's going to be worrying for him. This is Gats. This is Packer's map. And that was incredibly close. Gats is going to take it in the last 10 seconds by one frag. So even. So, so even.
gonna be on the second map for Silent Seed. Here we go. Baka versus Gats on Silent Siege. Gats is one map up. And here we go. Gonna be starting off on Packer here. Readjustment of my headphones. And here we go. Packer gonna be waiting up. Interesting, completely waiting, not moving at all, potentially to try and hide from Gats, not be spotted. Unfortunately, Gats able to spot Packer and able to take the first kill of the game. Gats now one frag up, but takes a big bit of damage. Able to use that rocket boost, pull himself up to the top level here. Packer's going to be very low health, but picked up that armor. He must have only about 10 to 15 health right now. But Gats only with eight. If Pack can just knock him with the shotgun shots, he takes one. Two to one, the scoreline right now at the minute mark. As these guys go in for it. Unfortunate spawn for Packer right there. <laughs> Fuck this, he cries. That is the problem with random spawns, they can see un seem unfair in the moment, but you have to think it is entirely random. And honestly, it's got to be better than getting spawn camped on hub for 10 minutes. Cats 5-2 to two up on Packer. Packer getting away again with just a sliver of health goes down. Pops out through that teleporter. Managing to avoid almost all damage from Gats, but Gats manages to pick up the kill. And now 7-2 to two, the scoreline, only two minutes in. Gats definitely just managing to push up and run away with this frag at the minute. Manages to push in, not quite managing to do any damage though. Does seem to be missing quite a lot of these rail shots. Gats though managing to connect very well. So look at his percentages. Pretty good percentages right there. 22% rail certainly isn't bad. Waiting. Hidden. Packer didn't know he was there. And Gats takes him out. And then Packer spawns, goes for that armor, but Gats is ready. And Packer has called an end game, calling GG. And has quit. Unfortunately, that game not quite as close as the first one at all. Only three minutes into the game. And Packer. And his old F Ford. And called GG. So we are gonna be moving on to the next uh, next set of players. See if anyone else is up and running. Got a gamer, empty game here. We've got a game here. Rainbow and Champ, Ramsey Zono, let's refresh because I don't think they're quite right because Ramsey Zono shouldn't be playing right now. And indeed, Ono is not on this server. 
but BW is. So we have one minute left in this run. This is about to take a map on BW by the looks of things. A very nice shot from Ramses. He takes control of the map. Nice shot from BW. Does a lot of damage there. And Ramses able to take him out. Just too stacked. Triple kill. Eighteen to ten with ten seconds left to go. Ramses is gonna take this one. Not quite sure on the map scores. Uh you could think this is potentially the first map. But it could also be the second here. There we go, first map. So we have second map going over to Fuse. Quite a close game by the looks of things. No suicides. Just raw kills and deaths. And we'll see. We'll see who's going to take this one. see coming up in matches doesn't seem too good unfortunately Sorry about the knocking noises, that's the uh, cable rubbing on everything as I adjust myself in the seat. Let's put the music back on. As we wait for this game to start. This one should be quite a close game, looking at the last game. Here we go. Looking at the last game, could be pretty good. So we shall see. BW starting off here. Gonna go in, grab the armor. Ramses is gonna get the health, but BW is gonna get the second armor. So Ramses with the mega health, BW with two armors, BW catching Ramses off guard at the first hurdle and in the first fight, 1-0 to Ram 1-0 to BW, sorry. And there's the lovely spam. to BW here. This seems like definitely BW's third map. Rams is extremely low BW just not able to connect that shot. Now Rams is gonna do not all that much damage to BW here. Rams is seemingly not able to just connect the shots here which is quite unfortunate. The armor's popping up together and BW keeping them controlled. And managing to rotate the map, pick up these little shards, keep himself in control. And you can see these rockets he's spamming off. He's just spamming off little bits of rocket, a little bit of wear, managing to get some good damage dealt across the board. But Ramses has managed to do a lot of damage. So now BW is going to have to get around to picking up some of the armors. 
And now Rams is with some armor. BW also has some armor, but he's gonna have to be a little bit more careful with his stat. As it goes down very quickly, the amount of rocket jumps, little blaster jumps, they knock down this armor stack very quickly. Because no matter how much control you get on this map, you can only really have 100 armor. A little bit more if you pick up the shards, but realistically you're not going to get all the shards straight after picking up both armor sets. Gat's gonna do, or not Gat, sorry, Ramsey's gonna do a bit of good damage to BW. And there's the first kill for Ramses. He puts himself on the board, he starts off his clock. And his area is ticking. These items about to come up. DW just picked up that mega mega health, sorry. Mega health. No mega armors on this map. Nice shot there, BW hits the armor, flies up in the air, manages to do a good bit of damage to Ramses. And there's Ramses getting back with the Crylink. BW gonna grab the health. Ramses gets a good bit of damage onto him, but it's not going to take away that stack from that mega health, which is what Ramses would have been hoping for as a bit of exit, just to get rid of that. If he could get rid of it without taking any damage, it's effectively milling, yeah, nulling out that item. Ramses is going to take a self kill though, but BW extremely low. Only one rail will be needed to take him out. And now, Ramses just floats around the map. Takes a good bit of damage from BW going under. Shooting up at the floor, BW going to take one of the uh, one of the armors here. And the other one has just come up. So BW may be able to pick that up. I know, I think. No, I must have been seeing things and I saw that one came up. So five seconds. Till the armor. There's the other armor come up. And now this mega health is ten seconds away. Gats is well out of position for that. BW knows when it is. He's going to take Ramses out. Five to two the current score. Just about five minutes in. Looks like it'll be five to two at five minutes in. Unless BW can push this one very hard. Rams is grabbing a, an armor. It's going to put him in a bit of a better position. He hasn't been in a very good position with the armors this game. He gets BW down to just seven health in that fight, but can't quite push the issue enough. Again, another one of those positions where you, if you're out of control, you can't quite tell how much health your opponent has. BW going to suicide there. An interesting strategy. He must have known he only had one health left. He only had one health left for a little little bit of time there. Had enough time to think and see that he only had one health left and didn't have enough health to hop up there. Rams is coming in hot with the rocket launcher. Going to take out BW. Get the score up to an almost even 4-3. And he's just not going to be able to take it back. But he manages to trade out there. Fantastic trading from both players. And now 5-4 to four your scoreline. We've got 4 minutes left to play. BW going to go down. Scores are now even. Mega health isn't up. That 50 is. Both 50s taken pretty much the same time. So now BW is going to see that this other one isn't taken. He's going to scroll around. He's not quite sure when it's been taken though. Rams is now going to try and get back. Doesn't want to push him too hard. The mega health is up. BW is going to get it just before getting hit. Which is good for him. Doesn't want to get hit. Would have almost certainly gone down. Managed to steal the armor away from Ramses there. Now he's going to make his way over to the other armor. The second armor is up. 
I do believe. No, it's not. Hmm. Not quite sure when that was taken. We didn't quite get the didn't quite get the C on it. BW does a good bit of damage to Ramses, a massive amount of damage, and he evens up the score line. Rams is now just lagging behind a little bit. Not got much health, not got much armor at all. He's gonna go in just at the wrong time. BW gonna get a nice shot. And it looks like they traded there. They did indeed trade both players getting a kill. They're exactly even. Ramsey's getting a perfect shot onto BW to knock him off of his jumps across. BW only with a few health left. Ramsey's just can't manage to quite finish it up. You've got 10 seconds left before any of the armors spawn. So both these guys are going to sweep around the sweep around the map waiting for the arms to spawn both of them very close to each other looks like bw might be able to get away with collecting both though if he can get away with both it could be a big problem for ramses ramses here very low on health though he's only got 20 health he doesn't want to lose this fight bw's gonna grab the armor just surviving before grabbing the health and manages to get a kill onto ramses and now picks up this armor only just survived before picking up that health. Seemingly only had about 103 health, I'd have said. So he only just survived that rail from Ramses. Unfortunate for Ramses. Very fortunate for BW, but Ramses is going to be able to pick that health up and pick up a kill, putting himself back in a good position. Now Ramses just having to set himself, sets his sights on just getting one more kill. He doesn't have control bw incredibly good control player and they trade out again with only a minute left these guys are neck and neck on this map it could very much go either way at any point during the rest of this game nine to nine your score line and ramses with a beautiful rail he's only got 50 seconds left but these frags are coming thick and fast he manages to get two he's pushed up Will he be able to take this game? He's got three frags, 30 seconds. It's definitely doable. Ramses has just done it. BW could do it now. None of the items are really going to come into play in the last section of this game. They're coming up just too late. But BW is looking to lose this match. 15 seconds left, down to 10 now. And Rams is just running away, manages to get another kill as he pulls away. And there it is. Rams is his game. GG. Rams takes it 2 2 nothing on the overall. Both pretty close games. That second game, absolutely so close. Right to the end. And yes, yeah, so many, so close. So close fights there. have a look over at the brackets so solid and gats are going to be playing and Miriam and ramses are going to be playing dodger versus seeky i think we'll leave that one Miriam and ramses is going to be a good game Although I do want to watch Solid at some point before the end of this. So I think I'm going to go and try and find Solid's game. Oops. So 
Cyber Ion. I think he's on C1. Server not quite up. Oh, here we are. So Solid versus Gaps. We are on Tuma, which is... Uh... There we go. Solid's favourite map. Definitely Solid's picked this. There's no way Gats would have picked it. And there is another frag Solid. So I'm not quite sure if we're in the first map or the second map of this series. But whichever map it is, it's definitely Solid's map. Any other spectators? No, we don't. So I'm not going to know who is in the lead right now. But we are on solid. On his best map. Making amazing shots. This map has so many good little trick jumps you can do. It's such a well textured map. Absolutely stunning. The bitrate has probably gone through absolute crap right now. But it is an absolutely beautiful map. So that's definitely worth something. Isn't it? Four to one the score line at two minutes. As Solid takes a little bit of a lead. Gats using that arc, a weapon only found really on this map. Meant to be replacing the machine gun. In an upcoming version of Xenotic. But only a few maps so far have actually done it. Solid poking through that hole. Pulls forwards, does a good amount of damage onto Gats. And manages to grab Gats out. And now Gats going down again and again. And Solid seems to be just keeping that rocket launcher under lock and key. The item timings are interesting on this map. So that rocket launcher and that uh, vortex are on 30 second timings. So it is possible to completely lock someone down. And the fact that the rocket launcher and vortex come up so close after this, uh, this mega health is quite interesting. It seems like Solid potentially has them on rotation. He does in fact have all these items on an exact rotation. He's letting Gats take that uh, that mega armor though, but he's always getting that 50 armor in the middle, in between them all, and he's always getting the uh, rocket launcher. Gats, he's picked up a kill here. He's gonna be able to grab a second Solid spawning in a fortunate location for himself. It looks like he's going to go down again, but he actually seems to be picked up. He's able to grab a kill there, and now he's off to do the loop again. He grabs the items, he grabs the next. He's going to try and grab the armor boot that's already gone to Gats. Makes a nice shot, very good. Hearing where the position of that player was, and managing to make a shot over towards it. Definitely putting some good shots together here. There it is. Another shot, another kill, another loop round to pick up all these items. Another good amount of damage to be dealt. So many little ways to get through all these side alleyways and push up. Make a lot of difference on this map. Gats waiting for that item to come up. Solid's going to do some good damage. He's not going to quite hit the second one. He'll assume that Gats is gone. But the item was taken. Again, Solid doesn't seem too worried about this. I think it's definitely... He has all of the items 
on rotation here. He knows where Gats was, does not want to go in and get taken out. It's an extremely powerful weapon, that arc. Solid. Just saving himself, trying to take some damage, grabs the armor. Gats is going to get the health. He'll know Gats has got the health, but he's going to be able to take the rocket launcher. All he wants is that rocket launcher. He wants to just deny Gats from getting the rocket launcher. Knocks Gats into that horrible pit of gears that is just an instant death. As you can see by the void, it is just an instant death. And Gats here. Looking like he's going to take a good fight to take down. The mega health is up. The next items are going to be coming up. And Solid has them back on rotation, on lockdown. He's got all the items. He knows what he's got to do. And the score just keeps going up. And it's just going to keep going up. Gap scores GG. It's a tough map to play, it's definitely a specialist map, and Solid is definitely a specialist on this one. 21 to 2, the score, with an end match. And it looks like Solid also took the first map in quite convincing fashion as well. Solid definitely playing some good games. Seeky versus Dodger appears to have just started on C2, so we're going to pop over to that, but actually... Drain has already got that one. By the looks of things. Yeah, that's the one we're playing on. Got C2. Where else have we got? We've got D2. What's Spike versus Champ on D2? Spike, four frags in the lead. don't have any uh, any way to check the scores right now but I would assume this is the second or third map Spike currently in the lead on this one champ a decent uh, Gets another kill here. What are you doing? Good bit of damage to Champ. Champ just rushing into quite a few of these fights. Unable to quite capitalise and quite make the shots. And Spike's capitalising on that. Definitely, but Champ picks up the arm. Uh, picks up the mega health. Gonna be heading over to the armor in just a second. There's just enough time to get a fight in it looks like. Neither player has any armor right now. And the mega armor is coming up. Spike doesn't want to let Champ do any damage to him. The rockets are coming through. Champ pushes up. Spike knows he's got the health to take out. Champ is just missing these finishing rails. And he gets him. Looks like he got him in the toe in the end there with that rail. But that's it, that's all you need. That one shot in the toe. 
That's enough damage. Next, moving over. This fight over in this main corridor. Champ going to take the kill. 3 to 10 the scoreline. Four and a half minutes in. And Spike's going to be struggling for health here. There's a good bit of damage onto Champ. Champ now going to get this mega health. 15 seconds to the 100 armor. Champ doesn't seem to quite know the timing on it. There's a good chance he's still working off the old time, but he's managing to do enough damage to just stop Spike from grabbing anything anywhere. It doesn't know where Spike's gone right now, just listening to him, trying to hear him. You can hear those items we picked up. He can hear the jumps, he hears the footsteps, but Spike at the same time can hear Champ. There's enough time left in this game for Champ to turn it around. If he can keep control, Spike very early to be playing this running away style. But it looks like he is trying to just get away and stay away and heal enough damage to stay in the game. Not losing too much. The more you run away, the less stack you have and the more chance you have to just lose all the stack and then have your opponent completely rush you in the end. Champ looks like he's bringing it back though. He's got some good stack. And a beautiful shot from Spike. Gets an unfortunate spawn there. Fragging Champ. 6 to 12 your scoreline. With 6 minutes in. All the 6 is there. By choosing to miss out on the mortar, I think. We've got two seconds left until this mega health grabs it goes fast. Ten seconds until the hundred armor. A beautiful shot there from Spike. He's looking very much in control on this map. He's able to keep control even when he's lost control, which is a weird thing to say, but he keeps control of himself, he keeps control of knowledge about when the items are up, and as soon as he's able to get enough items to actually take the fight, he's able to take the fight, win the items back. He's never losing uh, the item, he's only losing the control of the items, not the control of the map. So he's not a, he might not be able to pick up the items for a little bit now because Champ's just done enough damage. But realistically, Champ actually doesn't have enough health to push this spike, actually, with the better stat. But Champ with the better items, Spike, going to be able to take that kill. And here's Champ. He's going to try and capitalise on this. He's only got two and a half minutes to push and to take the uh, take the win here. But it looks like oh, Champ goes down with the blaster doing damage to himself. And with two minutes left. Spike is really putting the hurt on. He's able to hit all these shots. He's able to keep Champ at range. Both of these very good players of the game. Spike making a good uh, April Fool's joke. We've got a few people slightly worried that he was actually quitting the game. It's quite clear to see he's here to stay. He's here to win. Beautiful shot onto Champ as he's looking the other way. Calling GG with a little over a minute left to go. We'll see the end match vote, I'm sure, in a second.
spawn system being blamed again. It is an interesting spawn system and the random certainly has put a few problems in for people. There we go. Spike takes the first map. We're heading off to Silent Siege for the second. And Fuse, if we need it, will be our decider. So let's have a look at our current bracket. So, Spike and Champ just got one match played. Dodger and Seeky is happening now. Then we'll go over and I want to watch Solid and Go. Five, four, three, two, one, begin. We're on Silent Siege. Champ and Spike. This one I think is gonna be Champ's pick. Potentially. Although I'm not one hundred percent sure if it will be. Uh, it doesn't exactly say. But it's after that last map, I would have thought that uh, Champ potentially, though, actually would have picked Silence, um, would have picked Stormkeep as his first map. Champ, they're going to take the first kill. And it doesn't matter whose map it is, all that matters. Is who wins it. Beautiful shot there from Champ. He's going to be taking the early victory or early lead, sorry. Triple kill. Now, Champ. And Spike, very closely matched in that last game actually. Spike taking it away at the end there and Champ just getting a little bit tilted, which I think contributed to a definite score difference. But Champ back with a vengeance into this next game. Pushing this very hard, gets a beautiful flick, uh, flick grenade onto Spike. Two minutes in, he's 4 0 up. And now we're looking for a bit of a comeback from Spike. He's managed to get the mega health but the hundred armor's gone to champ as he sits in this room and waits for a bit more health to regen with the regening health in Zenotic. Spike gonna come through both players hitting each other for around 80 damage there and Spike sitting by the looks of things on that uh, on that health sorry he's not gonna want to go into this fight Champ picks up the 100 armor, 
They're trading major items here, but there's no small armors. So the Mega, slightly less powerful than 100 armor. But a four frag lead for Champ is extremely important here. And he makes it five. He's got all the weapons and now he's got that Mega health. He's gonna head off for that 100 armor. Manages to break another frag out of it too, and he's got an extremely powerful position to start playing this game from. Six frags up. And Spike is looking in major trouble. Beautiful shots there from Spike does go down it is a traded frag but it puts some position to spike especially from the position within before with having absolutely no map control by being able to take champ out and be able to know that he's brought back down to zero and they're both on level playing field on the score it's quite good to know that you just know exactly where your opponent is you know what sort of positions you can play and it's sort of a bit of a reset for both players and you know that your opponent's just not quite able to carry on quite as hard as they are. Champ gets the kill there. An unfortunate spawn, but he is able to make something of it. But he just seems a little hesitant to push in. And now Champ's capitalising on every tiny little bit of gameplay advantage he can get. Beautiful shots coming out here. He's able to do just a little bit of damage to Spike and he's able to finish him off right there. Spike taking quite a lot of damage from all these little nets. We're five minutes in, so we're halfway and Champ shows no signs of slowing down whatsoever. Spike calls GG at five minutes and it looks like we're going to fuse as the deciding map. So both games being called I think because of the spawn system, but there's definitely going to be some complaints about the spawn system. It's a new system. People are going to complain about it. At least we've actually played um, some games with it rather than just binning it off. It's nice to see things be tried. It's always good to see things be tried. I have seen good results come out of... Uh, this sort of spawn system with random spawns Five, four, and here we go on fuse alright let's go we're going to start off on champ he took the last map he's got the momentum he's just got to hope not to get tilted spike I don't I think he managed to whiff it he did the first time he whiffed that mega this map getting very well played. It seems to be a comfort ground between a lot of players. It's a map that people haven't massively mastered. But at the same time, everyone vaguely knows. Rather than Hub, where a few people have absolutely mastered it. Such as Champ and Dodger. Spike with a 1-0 lead. Actually the creator of this map. So... You'd expect him to have a little bit of an advantage, but it's been such a long time that it's not like being the creator actually gives you an advantage anymore. Especially when you come up against someone with the calibre of champ. He is well versed in Zenotic Duel. And definitely has the ability to take this map, but both players do. Spike will be sitting comfortable on this map. Potentially a little nervous about losing because it's his own map, but again, I think it's just been so long that it's uh, not too important to him to win his own map. Potentially weighing on the back of his mind. Complete speculation, might as well. It's got to be a proper cast. We've got to get a bit of complete bollocks speculation in here. <laughs> As Spike, he's got a good lead, though. He's got a very solid lead here, and... A good amount of damage dealt to Champ. Keeping Champ on the very low, but it's not like he's being allowed to snowball out of control here. 
this mount very difficult to snowball on again because of that lack of major armor the 100 armor only the shards can take you over the uh, over the 100 so there's not too many shards dotted around this map and you have to take two hotly contested minor armors the 50s to be able to get into the position a beautiful play from spike there absolutely fantastic but he's gone and whiffed the mega again the champ's going to be able to capitalize on that not only does spike have to do a little bit more damage to himself with the blaster but i think champ was able to get in a bit of damage from up there even if it was quite a small whiffed mostly missed shot but there is a kill spike gets himself Champ is pushing towards taking control of this map. He's got a little bit of armor. He's got a little bit of position. He's in the right place to definitely take something here. As he put, picks up that mega, he's going to deal some good damage to Spike. And both players just waiting on these armors to respawn. Both going low. And Champ manages to get a kill. Two seconds until that armor's up. The other armor is up at the minute. So Spike will be able to take that. I think if he goes round, he grabs it. But he takes a massive amount of damage. Full 80 rocket. And now these guys really going at it. Champ, with his signature aggressive playstyle, plays like a defragger. Well, as far as I know, he's absolutely rubbish at defrag. <laughs> but I think that's more time. Prefers to frag, doesn't prefer to put the time in. Definitely has good movement. But when he wants to get that kill, he plays like an absolute perfect defragger, moving around this map, following his opponent, and never stopping if he knows where his opponent is and where to get the next kill. Moves over there, nice little jump, fakes out Spike who goes for a shot and wastes a little bit of time shooting over. And now, good damage coming out from Champ, he takes the lead of this game, 4-3. to three. A beautiful bit of prediction there. A little bit lucky, but also very good prediction knowing where Spike was. He probably heard him, was able to shoot a shot towards that area. And the luck just came in having the exact right timing. But he's able to pull away now with good play. I don't think anyone's going to argue that the spawn system has really impacted this game so far. Obviously, it's going to have made some difference. But... I don't think we've seen any players spawn right next to each other and get easy frags with unlucky spawns yet, so looking quite good. And a beautiful drop by Spike. He's keeping this tight. He's definitely not letting Champ get away. The interesting thing is Spike has had control of this game for probably three and a half to four minutes out of the current almost six minutes we've played. But yet, in the short time Champ has been in control, he's managed to do so much more damage. That's just the play styles of these two players. Champ, an extremely aggressive player when he's got the control. But definitely a smart player when he's not got the control at the same time. It takes a good player to be able to slow down when you've not got the control and gain the control and then go absolutely ham. People with aim, like Champ, tend to actually be just complete aggressive players. But Champ manages to control it, manages to use it in the right places. But Spike, he's got aim. He's definitely got aim. And he's definitely got the power and the speed. And Champ's not getting away from him just yet. But Champ extremely low. He manages to get a kill out of this though. Somehow surviving with so little health. Picks up that, uh, that little health bubble on the floor for the 50. Just at the right time. And Spike can't get the kill. And now Champ. Here we see. Look at this. He pushes so quick. So fast. In only a few seconds he's got three kills. An unlucky spawn there from Spike. But it wasn't too bad really. 
It wasn't too bad of a spawn from Spike. As he pops through the teleporter. Nine to five, your scoreline. We're seven and a half minutes into this. Champ looks like he's going to be able to hold control. But he'll definitely have to work for it. You can see he's got control, but he's still pushing. He's not letting off the pressure. Because he knows if he lets off the pressure, that's just going to let Spike get back into the game. And by not letting off the pressure, he can pull ahead even more. So if he has to absolutely let off the pressure towards the end of the game, he knows he's still got it. Definitely looks like GG, but I don't think Spike will want to give up just yet. Champ can certainly lose this, and there's the GG from Spike. So no map on this going without an end game. Champ takes it, and we're going to Champ versus Mirio. Okay, we're going over to an A or B server. We'll see where they connect to. Uh, let's set it there. Uh, everyone's parting, obviously. B1 by the looks of things. I think that was B2. No, no, we're into B. Yep, we're into B1. Okay. So Mirio, yeah, everyone's on here. Here we go. Pull the music back up as we wait. Might as well. Okay, we're going to be having a two minute break. Already blaming the lag. Champ generally wanted to get the uh, excuses out of the way before the game. Dropping hub, probably a good, probably a good idea against Champ. Will be interesting if we see Champ versus Dodger in the finals. Both of them love hub, but will Champ just drop it knowing he'll lose? Champ to pick. So Stormkeep is being played first. And then we're going to Silent Siege. But not Fuse for the final. It's not going to be a repeated map set. I reckon we are going Graphite last. Because neither of these players are probably going to want to go tough. Toma is definitely a specialist map but potentially if both of them believe the other player is not a specialist in it
Yeah, dropping Thelma. Alright. We're off to Stormkeep first. Right then. How are we going to go? <laughs> One nil. One nil to Marion. Right then. This is going to be a pretty good game. I'm just going to quickly mute myself. Oh no, we're going. So I'm just going to wiggle my headphones around a second. Alright, here we go. Mirio versus Champ. We're getting in here. Go start off on champ. He won this map last time. He's definitely happy with this, as we could see in the picking process. Even though it's Mirio's pick, champ is definitely happy with this as the uh, as the starting map. And the fact he picked Silent Siege next suggests he's happy on that map. But Mirio's going to pick up the first kill, and he's going to pick up the control of the map a little bit. Champ isn't able to get that. He kills himself with the grenade launcher. And he's in a minus one. Not the best position to be in as we go into the next section of this fight. Minute in and your score is one to minus one. Mirio in the lead. Champ having an unfortunate problem with the grenade launcher. That should be able to put that behind him and start on the next set of this game. Mirio does a fair bit of damage with the rocket launcher, curving it round to hit Champ, and then able to finish him off in a close range fight under the stairs. Champ taking a lot of damage from each of these fights. Mirio getting away to take the next item. Didn't leave that 50 up, interestingly. Instead of taking it and getting even more health stacked up. Beautiful. Using the bounce is an absolute master of using the Crylink. It's going to be very difficult to take him on with that Crylink, but there's Champ. Does a good amount of damage, gets spooked by Mirio popping over. And I, he only just made that the second time round. To pick up the item. Could have been very close. With only 10 health when he made the jump. 1-4 to four the scoreline, 2.5 minutes in. Mirio does a massive amount of damage. Avoiding these rockets, grabbing the item and pulling off to find more weaponry because his problem there yeah, got the kill, but it wasn't with uh, all the weapons. So now he's got stacked up, he's got the weaponry. He now knows where Champ is off of that hit. And it, oh, beautiful spam. Manages to get that. And Mirio. He's got a five frag lead. Champ getting that 50 health, manages to pick up a kill. And Mirio spawning just at the wrong time to get this item. Champ blasters across to grab it. If he can get Mirio in this position, then he'd be able to take a good position. Oh, 
And now Champ is just looking for this fight. He's trying to get Mirio to falter a little bit. He's trying to push him so hard. And there it is. Look at the push from Champ. He's got that little bit of control. Exactly what I was saying in the last map. He's got that little bit of control. And he's going to push it so, so hard here. Mirio popping out of every corner, it seems. And Champ has evened it up with a bit of fire. And now Mirio is looking to regain composure, regain his position. And that's a good way to do it with a rocket around the corner. But he is going to be losing this. That item almost up. Mirio grabs the Mega. Champ will be pretty content with the position he's just gained. He's got good stack. He's got good position. And now he's just got to move in. Still the scoreline 66 though. Both players down to such low health. Champ not quite able to finish Murray off with that rocket. But grabs him with the grenade launcher. And both players again trading out the items. Massive damage from Champ. He hits every single shot right there. Mirio's just looking at a spot of bother on this map. He had such a commanding early lead. But now... Just isn't able to have... Quite the position towards the middle of it. Beautiful shot there from Champ. Mario taken out again. And even though Champ isn't managing to pick up all the major items, Mario is managing to keep control of, the, of one of them. But all it's doing is slowing down Champ. It's slowing down Champ quite a lot though. In all honesty, it is slowing down Champ a lot. If he's not able to get all the major items, he can't quite push as much. He has to wait around a little bit. Mario's going to get the Mega Health again, but he is going to go down again, it looks like. Such low health, and I think he's going to get away with this, unless Champ can catch him on his exit. But Champ doesn't want to push in. You don't want to push in through those tunnels. You will just take so much spam. That is the grenade room. So... You don't want to take it. Oh, he's lagged out a bit there. Not quite sure what happened. Interesting. Mario is in a position to make a comeback though. He's only got to get nine frags in the next two minutes, which is definitely doable. Champ's already done it. So if Champ can do it, Mario can do it on this map. Ooh, wow. That was very nice from Champ. And in he goes. Again and again, he's just pushing himself forwards, trying to make some more dent in the score. Mirio not able to push. It looks like this map's definitely going to go to Silent Siege with Champ in the lead. So a ballsy play for Mirio to play Champ on this map, but he did start off very strong. The minute left, Mirror's going to need some hell of a comeback, but we'll see if he can do it. Might as well. I 
think the important thing now, really, if we're going to be honest, Mirio's not bringing this back, right? We need over 10 kills to make it. Champ went for the secret, uh, secret jump across. But yeah, let's be honest, Champ's not going to make it. But if Mirio can do some good damage at the end of this, then potentially Mirio will be able to tilt Champ a little bit, just that little bit, and be able to stop him from quite having so much uh, pizzazz going into the next map. And I think that's really what Mirio is trying to do. But there it is, 24 to 11, the scoreline. As we go into the next map, which is Silent Siege, it's Champ's pick. I'm not sure what the scores are on the other map at the minute. On the other match with uh, Solid and Dodger. But we shall see. Prepare for battle. Solid 1-1 one, one Dodger. Hmm. Four, Very nice. Three, two, one, begin. So champs map now. One nil up in the scores. And he's going to try and take this one. This is his pick. He's very comfortable on this map. As he showed against Spike. Did take so um, Stormkeep off of him, but Silent Siege is definitely not a bad map for Champ. Mirio going a bit more defensive at the start of this game. Going to be taken down first though, and now Champ tries to push it, tries to get the extra health, but it's not there. Miro took it in the last fight. Champ grabbing that 100 armor. And now looking to do some damage to Mirio. One all the score line, minute and a half in. Some nice spam damage from Mirio. Picks up the item, does a beautiful jump over. He's going to grab the, the uh, 100 armor. And then he's going to try to do some damage. He gets Champ all the way up in the air. Champ on such little health. And there it is, Mirio takes him out. Manages to get the kill on him. An unfortunate spawn there from Champ. Drops down into the jaws of Mirio. But he manages to get the kill, grabs the eye, uh, grabs the health, and then moves off for the armor. Has Mario manages to grab it? A little bit of a movement mistake there from Champ on the blaster, unable to even get in for the fight for the armor, and unable to do any damage out of it. Neither player really doing any damage though. In that last little fight, we're two and a half minutes in. Mirio is 3-2 up, but Champ currently has a little bit more control, I'd say. Although with that, Mirio has just taken the item's control. But Champ evens it up. And now Mirio is going to have to be careful. He's very low, but Champ doesn't want to push it. And there, Mirio gets it with the back spam. Champ trades it out though. Again, we're seeing very good play from Champ, keeping calm, keeping his ability to keep the frags coming, and there he is back in the lead. Gonna hop up over onto this. Lovely damage coming out from Champ. Is he gonna be able to get like two frags in the lead now? I think that's the first time we've seen anything more than one frag in the lead for anything more than about three seconds 
And now Champ starts his journey of pulling ahead. The items at very nice time intervals here. As Champ goes up a different way this time. He makes it up a different way. He knows Mirio was over there. So he wants to go up a different way to surprise Mirio. He doesn't want to come up straight into Mirio's rocket. Wouldn't do too much good for your health bar. Mirio getting Champ very low every time. But... Champ's managing to keep the number of engagements down on this map, actually. Definitely a very good map for him. He seems to be playing very well today. We could be in for a very, very good finals if it is the expected Champ versus Dodger. At this point, the way Champ is playing with four and a half minutes-ish into this map, looks like Champ's definitely going through. Mirio's going to have to mount one hell of a comeback to bring this one back. But it's still all to play for. As Mirio gets a kill. Proves to himself it's all to play for. He doesn't want to take that jump. Goes up very low health. The champ pops around that corner. He's dead. Champ's over on the other side of the map though. Good damage there. Mirio managing to avoid the death. Both players have the timing on this item now. And Champ gets taken down. Mirio, 6-9 to nine your score. With 5 minutes left, it's definitely all to play for right now at this point. No matter what the scoreline at 5 minutes, it's always undoable. And Champ... Does a good bit of damage. Mega health up next. 100 armor net. 100 armor 15 seconds after that about. And there's the mega health. Going over to Mirio. He's going to try and make his way over to the mega armor. Champ going to scoop up some scraps. He's not quite got the weaponry. He doesn't have the necks in his hand. Goes into this fight, he realises he doesn't have the next and starts spamming with other weapons. Mirio's going to go up there to try and deny him from getting the next again, I think. Or just to replenish his own next supply. Champ, though. Not looking like he really wants to push for the next. He's sitting around, does a good amount of damage to Mirio there. And a hell of a good damage to Mirio with that shot. Getting a lot of very direct hits now. Seems Champ playing today all or nothing. He either hits the shot with an 8 to damage, or he doesn't hit the shot. Of course he proves me wrong straight away in that fight by not hitting any direct hits, and also not missing any shots at all. 10 to 6 your scoreline as we come up to 7 minutes. Not long to go now in this map. Mirio is going to have to mount a comeback. That's a good amount of damage. A beautiful rocket to get some, some more damage in. He's got two seconds until the item is up. Mirio grabs it. Takes a bit of damage for his troubles. But he's managing to not quite connect. And Champ does connect. Now we head over to the 100 armour. Mirio is going to pick it up right on the dot as Champ scrolls around the map picking up the shards. He's going to have a good stack though. He's got a good stack and he's got good weapons going into this next fight. With one health remaining, Mirio takes him out on the spawn. If he'd have dropped down there, he wouldn't have died because he would have picked up the item before hitting the ground, which is why he did that. That wasn't completely suicidal. He would have picked up the item. It would have been added to his health. And then he would have hit the ground. And taken a little bit of fall damage. So. Not entirely a stupid play. But Mirio just in the right position. To be able to take him out. Three seconds left on this. And Mirio is definitely in a good position. Champ. He's got the. He's got the. Um the score advantage so he's definitely not completely out of this one 
And there's only a short amount of time left for Miria to bring this back, so he's going to have to work hard. Mario pulls it back again a little bit. One minute remaining. Mario's got to get three frags to even it up. close at this point. Mirio he's got Chump right down. Chump is just running away running away, running away and now Mirio is going to be taken out by Chump just a little bit and there we go, Champ has it. He's going into the finals. It's going to be Dodger versus Champ. The reason I went a little bit quiet just there, uh, I was looking at the chat to see what was happening in the Dodger game. Probably should have been watching this one, to be honest. But that was extremely close. All right, um, quick break, and then we'll have the finals. So the music will come back on. And I'm gonna mute my mic and go grab a bit more water and a little bite to eat. You should also stand up and walk around.
All right, we're back. See how bad this server gets. Is everyone's going to join the server? Of course. Uh, let's get into the game then. So we have. Oh, wrong one. There we go. We have Dodger versus. Click. Champ. Grand Finals. Let me check that my recording's actually going to work. So this is a recording of this game. Getting any heavy drop frames because of the recording? Oof, the coding seems to go down quite a bit when I uh, hit that. I'm going to close some stuff. Let's like quit that and that and that's going to quit. That. Kind of needs that one. Should have probably restarted my computer before doing this. But oh well. The internet may also be playing a bit of a problem part in this. Any heavy drop frames because of the recording? So now. Now we're all good. Okay, we're all good. We are all good for the recording. So this will mean I don't have to download the damn recording every time because that's what happened last time. I had to download all of them and edit them because my recordings didn't work. But Okay, we're just doing it manually, doing a bit of manual. So it's a dodger because he moves around during this time. Champ has dropped Stormkeep, Dodger has dropped Quark. We are left with... <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Neither of them wanted to play that. So interesting. He's picked Arrowwalk. Dodger's going to pick Fuse. So we know Champ's played this map. It's a good map pool, other than Tur, other than Tumma. Realistically, these guys both are extremely good at both of these games. But vote now. graphite, eh? Why are we why are we calling a vote? We haven't. Ah, I oh know we have. We have picked everything. Yes, pick Silent Siege, and then we had a pick for graphite. Sorry about the knocks on that. All right then, Dodger. Champ gonna take a minute. Then he's all fine. Hub, Fuse, Silent Siege, Graphite, and Toma. Damn. So, 
So, three to win. The best of five. This tournament going extremely smooth, actually. After the start, we had a lot of confusing stuff. Once we got into this single eliminator, it's been pretty smooth sailing, really. So... Just waiting on Champ to come in. Let's have a look how we got here. There's your bracket. Champ's back. <laughs> I was going to go through it, but Champ's already back, so I can't go through it. Turn that off, and here we go. Here we are in the grand final. We have Champ versus Dodger. We have Arrowwalk. It's a best of five. This is the first map. Let's go. We're going to start off on Dodger. Champ going to pick up that mega. Dodger with the 100 armor. Champ's going to take a little bit of damage, but not all that much really. Dodger takes a good amount of damage from Champ and doesn't manage to pick up the armor. Unfortunately, Champ now has the armor. So Dodger in a little bit of a skirmish here. He's still got the better stack, that's for sure. And he's able to pick up the first kill. The items are now up. Dodger makes a beautiful, I was going to say a beautiful jump, but he does scuff it a little bit, but not too badly. Rocket jumps through there. And this is going to be a very, very fast paced map. These guys are extremely good at this map. It is pretty much the most played map in Arena FPS history. Spawning in Quake 1, heading absolutely massively into Quake 3, with a good amount of play in Quake 2. But Quake 2 kind of the forgotten child of Duel. Much more well known for Catch the Flag. Champ grabbing the Mega. And Dodger got the 100 armor. Beautiful shot there from Dodger. He's going to be playing. Trying to keep the uh, pressure on all the game. These guys both have an extremely similar style of super hard. Trying to keep the pressure on. You see Dodger faking there. You saw the blaster. He knew Champ was down there. He knew Champ could hear his blaster. Set the blaster off. To make... The sound as if he was going towards the armor for champ baiting champ out so he could just switch back over to a damaging weapon and do some damage. Five to nothing your scoreline right now. Dodger is in the lead. And champ is gonna grab a few bits of items. He's not doing too badly on picking up any of these items. He's just not able to get it on the scoreboard. Dodger is keeping the constant pressure on. It doesn't matter how much uh, Champ is able to take away from him in terms of items. He's never able to use that with a health advantage. But it's not going to be an easy game for Dodger at all. Champ comes flying over the top there. Now, Dodger's just looking for his way back into this, back into the frags. He's definitely not out of the game, obviously neither player right now is back out of the game, but Dodger got pretty much all those five frags in the first minute and a half. We're now coming up to three and a half minutes, and there hasn't been another frag. Dodger now has all the major items, all the items he needs. To make these kills and now he's going to really push champ really try and make the difference and really try to get more score on the board 
And he's managed to do that a little bit. Gets a little bit more. A little bit of a bad spawn for Champy. Shouldn't be too fussed about the bad spawns on this map. The random spawns are so much better than the regular spawns on this map. Champ manages to steal away the 100 armor. And Dodgy goes on a massacre. 10 kills on Hub. A lot of damage here. Champ being taken out. Just can't seem to get into Dodger right now. Dodger playing an absolutely amazing game on Hub. It is both of these players' best maps. And when you've got two people that are so good at this map, it just comes down to really who is on better form today. So this will be a very good indicator for the rest of the tournament with just how much champ manages to come back on this map. Just whether he's able to come back at all or whether Dodger's just going to run away from it because we hit the five minute mark right now. And again, Dodger has a little bit of spurt where he does quite a bit of frags. Got the five frags again. And then it goes quiet again. He can't get a frag on Champ. Champ's not able to cap. He's just able to get away. Just able to get just enough health to survive. Every little fight with just a little bit left. It's a game of just surviving. But now he can't survive any longer. He does bring Dodger down to an extremely low health. But Dodger moving so fast that Champ can't really get one or two shots onto him. Dodger, here's the item be taken. He gets the Mega. And Champ's got the armor. And they fight in mid. Champ pushes to try and take Dodger out. Dodger does get taken out by Champ though. Tits in the chat. And now Champ has to try and take control. He's got the item control. Dodger's losing a little bit in the item control, but you can see the speed that Dodger is going around this map. You can see the absolute incredible pace that he goes, and it's incredible anyone ever hits him. He just doesn't stop going. Definitely helpful. See, Champ tries to do the same, but he's just not quite able to get the same precision. And Dodger just looks like he's completely going to crash it. I'm sure it just looks like he's not even moving. I'm watching now on the 30 FPS stream that you're getting. And it really does just look like one minute he's looking one way and one minute he's looking the other. Even on 60 FPS, even on 144 hertz. Dodger just plays in such a quick fashion. But Champ managing to get a few kills up on the board. He's pulling it back. It may be too little too late though. Dodger playing around through the gateway. And holding a high position. The health comes up, and Dodger gets the frag right as Champ's about to pick it up, unfortunately for Champ. He gets a bit of a dodgy spawn. And Dodger's able to capitalize, he gets the frag. Doesn't quite manage to get the refrag after the spawn, but he's going to be needing to get a move on. Dodger definitely the favorite for this final champ looking like he can put something in it Triple kill. but dodger is definitely running away with hub right now Beautiful shot onto Champ. 
on an absolutely fantastic shot. Well deserving on that one with the rage. Five frags without dying. It's incredible to see players at this high of a level just have such skill disparity. But really there isn't actually that much skill disparity here. There's just the difference in playstyle. On this map, you can get so many kills that racked up. Even if you are right at the top of your game, champ ends the game. And the first map goes to Dodger, 22 to 3. Off we go to Fuse then. Right, save that recording. We'll move on to the next thing. Fuse now. Prepare for battle. Oh, here we go. We are into the next map. Five, four, Dodger took the first three, one. Two, it's one, one to nothing. And we're going to start off on Dodger for this one. Fuse. It is Dodger's pick. We have seen Champ play here incredibly well over this tournament. We haven't yet watched Dodger at all. Except for the last map. And Champ is coming in hot. He'll definitely want to be taking this. He will not want to be two to nothing down and having to fight the last map. It's definitely it's just a bad position to be in when you go two to nothing down. You're always on that edge that you can't lose anymore. And your opponent's always got that, I can just win one. And that relaxation, extremely important. Dodger, a beautiful shot over hitting that next. It's interesting, Dodger, one of the very few people who will just stay in the middle of the map here. But Champ doesn't seem to go for the shots very regularly. A beautiful bit of movement there from Dodger. Absolutely fantastic to get down. And now, a minute and a half in, he gets the second frag. And he's going to pick up another spawn frag, it looks like. He doesn't want to push it too hard. And there's the third. An unfortunate spawn for Champ, but it looks like he might actually get away with it. Gonna go and Champ manages to get Dodger, manages to get the armor, oh sorry, the health, and gets the armor over here. Dodger's gonna get the armor the other side of the map, it looks like. But that's gonna be ripped away from him straight off the back of it by a rocket. Now Dodger just playing very defensively here. Just sitting back and there's the kill. Doesn't need to push in too hard until he knows he's got everything he needs to make the frag, make the play. And Champ now has got that little armour. And both players reasonably positioned. Dodger heard that boost pad. I was expected Champ to be over that side, but Champ decided to go the other way, pop out at the top. But since there's only really two options of which way to go there, and a little bit of difference in time to do it. Now you'll see, you just saw those two numbers pop up, 10 and then a 20. That was damage from the fire over by the other armour. You can see those. Right? 
Do I trouble him knowing exactly where Champ was when he saw that? Pushing these frags now though. Six to one the scoreline with three and a half minutes into this game. And Dodger wants this. You can see that he wants this. If he can make this, he's two, two maps up and he's only got one more to find. And this is his map choice. Going down again, get the rage, that's five kills in a row. But Dodger is just, he's not quite got full control of this map. It's very difficult to get full control of this map with the extra of uh, no 100 armor. A different play style, but it's generally a pretty standard sort of playing map. Other than that, Dodger very low here. Champ's got to push in before that mega, but Dodger has the mega now, and it's going to be difficult for Champ to capitalize on that now. Dodger's got the mega, but if he can do a good bit of damage coming through here, Dodger unable to do so much damage himself. Champ extremely low and a beautiful rocket from Dodger. A little bit of a bad spawn from Champ, but both players extremely low, so Dodger doesn't want to push it. Waits for Champ to come out, and Champ gets that. Oh, sorry, Dodger gets that kill. And Champ goes down. 10 to 1 the scoreline, 5 minutes remaining. Dodger makes a little bit of a misplay on that jump. Champ goes through, kills himself. We're now 10 to 0. And Dodger goes on a bit of a steamroller. Just off of this one. Trying not to make too many mistakes. Dodger gets taken out by Champ. Champ should be able to capitalise on this. Should be able to get this kill, but he just can't quite finish Dodger off. There goes Dodger. 2 to 11. Champ can bring this back. Now, can Dodger make a play of this? He can bring it back. Another frag. He gets a good spawn for out of champ. Well, dodgy for champ, but uh, good for Dodger. And 13-3 is your current scoreline. Champ doesn't know he's there. He would have expected to have hit him, but Dodger was just hiding. Doesn't get hit. Champ, big damage. He's got to be hoping for big damage right now. It's all he can hope for. Dodger's got to make a bit of a mistake. But at the minute, he just really doesn't seem to be making one. He doesn't want to. <laughs> He's playing incredibly well today. Champ's ready. To capitalize on a little, little slip up that Dodger makes. But Dodger isn't letting him have them. Champ is gonna look himself to find some damage here. He's not got the greatest stack. Dodger interestingly moving out. Must think Champ has a better stack than he does. But he's gonna find him. Over in the other room. Fifteen to three the score line. And Champ seems to have blown himself up. Uh, Interesting predicament for him there. Dodger is seemingly running away with this map. We've only got two minutes left to go. It's not looking good for Champ. 
You're going to have to reverse sweep Dodger by the looks of things. And all he can really hope for right now is to just throw Dodger off his rocking horse a little bit for the next couple of maps. And to get his swing back in his step. If he can get the swing back in his step, he might be in for a good one. Hoping we don't get a sweep here. Never good to see a sweep. Dodger slapping champ with the fish slapper. No weapon in Xenotic is useless, which is one of the best things about this game. There isn't a weapon that's useless, which means you can do so much good with every weapon. Dodger hunting for items here. He doesn't want to be too dangerous. He knows what he's got to do at this point. With only 30 seconds left, he has won this map. He knows he's got to keep Champ's ego down. Keep him on the back foot. It's also going to be in the back of his mind. He doesn't want to tilt himself for the next match. Both these players quite susceptible to tilt. I'd say Champ slightly more so than Dodger. That is potentially because I've seen Champ lose a lot more than Dodger. Usually two Dodger. And as any seasoned Xenotic player will know, Dodger is 12. He's not actually. But whatever. That's the end of the game. 17 to 3. And we're going into potentially the last map. Oh, I hate talking about random stuff at the end of games. I really need to stop doing it because uh, then the game ends and you're out of it. This is what it's like when I record demo batches, isn't it? It's just in between games. I'm like, eh, whatever. Whereas I've been trying to keep up the professional appearance between games. Silent Siege. Champ calling it. I will win this one. Prepare for battle. Oh, bloody hell. All right. Champ has just called it. On Silent Siege, he's just said... I believe, or not even I believe, he's just said, I will win this. So we're going to actually start out on champ. He has won very convincingly on uh, this map a couple of times today. Definitely a good player on it. I haven't seen Dodger play this map in a while. But it hasn't been close games the previous couple. And... Uh, Going to start off, Dodger gets a frag. Apparently nobody believes in champ. I think he can definitely take this. He's definitely got the skill to take this. I want him to take this. For the first time ever, I think. I am definitely rooting for champ. I want more games. I don't want this one to be over yet. Dodger goes 2-0 up. Champ is going to be starting to need some more health. The Dodger just sort of sitting. Quite a good health stack. He's got the control of the items, but Champ still hasn't lost time on the items. Interesting pan down there from Dodger. Beautiful flick. Triple kill. And then he pops up to the top. Four zero the score. Champ gonna pick up and steal away that armor. Put Dodger on a very low, very, very low at one point, but then he gets that mega and he's back up. Grabbing the next 
Got to keep it away from champ as well as taking it to replenish your uh, your own ammo supply. Champ, play, trying to play aggressive. I think Dodger potentially has seen Champ play this map before uh, in this tournament and seen the aggressive nature. Because Dodger's playing extremely passively, not a way that I usually say Dodger would play. Especially not against Champ. Someone who really brings out that sort of aggressive playstyle in you by being so aggressive. And to beat him, you have to play, beat him at his own game, really. Playing defensive can't always work. Traded out items. Champ going to miss all his shots there. And Dodger able to do a good amount of damage. Champ makes a very, very nice shot. Missing there. Great drop there from Dodger. He's able to keep his health up here. Champ not able to do enough damage to really take him out. Useful shot there from Champ. He's pushing this issue. Dodger, very low. Just can't quite connect. Champ is unable to quite get the kill. Ha Dodger hasn't picked up the health. Champ is going to go down here. And Dodger knows that he hasn't picked up the health. Champ takes him out. Dodger's going to pick. Dodger should be able to get the health. He gets the health. Champ should have heard that one. He'll think that Dodger actually just picked it up on the last rotation as well but actually that's missed an entire rotation I think Dodger was planning on going back for it but unfortunately got taken out and then Dodger takes out Champ coming up to the halfway mark right now Dodger has a slight lead but Champ certainly not out of this game right now he just needs that little kill that one catalyst that he can get because so far all his kills have been traded. That's why Dodge has been playing and keeping ahead. If Champ's got a kill, it's been pretty much instantly traded. Whereas Dodger is able to get kills like that, where he pulls ahead a bit. And Champ takes out Dodger. Can he get the second? If he can get this second and he can get a bit more of a position. Will he hear that items come up? He moves away. The mega health is about to come up. Dodger's going to grab the mega health as it spawns. And Champ's going to get the 100 armor. And now we move. Dodger. He's behind this wall. Neither player connecting. Champ gets first connection. He gets a beautiful second. But Dodger, he's done so much damage with the rockets. And a flick onto Champ. Looks incredibly dodgy as we flick back over, but we did just change POV, so uh, it's not dodgy. Like incredibly dodgy hack snapback there, but yeah, that's, that happens a lot when you change POV in the middle of a fight. So now, Champ looking very well behind. He's holding on to some semblance of this fight. Both players so excruciatingly low and Champ just goes through at the wrong moment. Dodger actually missing all of those jumps helped him in the end, it seems. Because he was able to find Champ on the wrong end of it. 10 to 3 your scoreline. We're six and a half minutes into this game. Champ appears to have disconnected. He's just bugging out, running against a wall. That's... Interesting. Champ disconnected. I doubt at this point he's... Um, yeah, 
Now I'm going to doubt at this point that he has rage quit because it's not too bad of a position. But we are going to have a look. If he crashed, we'll have a rematch. That's fair enough from Dodger. But I'd say he probably crashed because I'd I'd want a rematch. <laughs> Personally, I wouldn't want to I wouldn't want to win a tournament off of a crash, especially when you're two games up. But we'll see if he comes back. He's still in. And we're just going to wait. So this will all get edited out. In fact, that's not even going to get used in that video. I was going to edit it out, but... Ping timeout means he quit. Yeah, disconnected. That's fair enough. If you alt F4, you'd automatically leave the game rather than just... Uh, rather than just hopping in place, because the game will send a... Ah, here he is, back. Damn. Fair enough, lagging out. Entirely fair. Dodger being fair, giving the rematch. You don't want to win a tournament off of a lag out, even if you are in control of the map, you know. <laughs> Take this win next week, please, default spawn system. Well, if he's gonna take the take the loss, I guess we'll be off, but well, he's going to take the loss. Dodger is going to take the dual cup. And uh, yeah. So there it is. Dodger has won. Thank you for watching this tournament. Thank you for playing if you played. Uh, Drainer, thank you if you're watching this one. Thank you for casting the other games. And hopefully we'll have the same sort of games next week. That's incredibly good and very close matches. So I'm going to get all of these edited up, get them uploaded overnight, and we will see you all next week. Please, by the way, outside of this whole tournament -y thing, follow my Twitch because then you will see me shitpost and play Zenotic badly and also TF2 maybe some CS yeah I, I, I sometimes cast stuff so if you've got demos you want me to cast right send them they'll be put up on YouTube um, but yeah just send demos to me and I cast those on stream and then you can like yeah see someone who doesn't really know much about video gaming cast your demos also available for other video games just not counter strike because nah anyway thank you all for watching it has been wonderful casting and i'll see you next week
if not before. Hit up Xenotic on the IRC, get playing, get the game downloaded if you haven't already downloaded it. And hopefully you will be in the tournament next week. Ta-ta!